Inexperienced, poorly trained and underfed North Korean troops have been sent to Russia to fight in the war against Ukraine, The Guardian reports. After weeks of speculation, NATO and the Pentagon have confirmed that some 10,000 North Korean troops are already in Russia, particularly near the Ukrainian border at Kursk, where they could be deployed in the coming days. As US Secretary of State Antony Blinken noted, Russia has been training them in artillery, drones and infantry operations, preparing them for frontline combat. While their participation will help Russia avoid mobilization, experts doubt the effectiveness of these units due to their lack of experience. The soldiers, most of whom are young people under 20, are not used to fighting on the planes and will fight in uniforms with Russian symbols that are little known to them. North Korean soldiers previously fought only in the Korean War in the 1950s and in recent years have provided military assistance to other countries as consultants. Now they are equipped with Russian weapons, including machine guns, mortars and sniper rifles. Analysts say it is a historic move for North Korea which has never sent large ground forces abroad before. However, as An Chang-il, a former North Korean military officer noted, Kim Jong-un is taking a risk. If there are not many casualties, he will get what he wants to a certain extent. But things will change dramatically if many of his soldiers die in battle. For many North Koreans, fighting in Russia is a chance for pride and an opportunity to earn money to support their families, according to South Korean intelligence, have been moved to undisclosed locations to ensure the confidentiality of the deployment. Choi Jong-hoon, a former army officer who now leads an activist group in Seoul, misses his compatriots whom he views as cannon fodder. They will be sent to the most dangerous positions. I am sure that most of them will die. The coming weeks will show whether Russia will live up to its hopes for a military unit that has more weaknesses than real advantages in a conflict. Around 30% of Russia's nuclear arsenal, which consists of approximately 5,000 580 warheads is within range of Ukrainian drones and missiles, according to foreign affairs media outlet. Because Ukrainian drone assaults have already reached as far as Moscow, it is clear that at least 14 Russian nuclear storage sites now fall within range of its drones. At least two of those sites are less than 100 miles from the Ukrainian border, well within striking range of the more damaging missiles Ukraine already possesses, and another five sites lie less than 200 miles from the border, close to or just beyond the range of the advanced Western-provided missiles that Ukraine is seeking permission to use against conventional targets in Russia. Foreign Affairs says, the author of the article notes that there are no signs that Ukrainian forces are intentionally targeting nuclear warhead storage sites. However, it is the Russian government's responsibility to move its nuclear warheads out of the way of danger. Russia knows that its warheads should not be positioned anywhere near conventional military operations. After Ukraine launched its first drone and missile attacks against Belgorod in the spring of 2023, Russia quickly reported that its Belgorod storage site was no longer storing nuclear warheads, acknowledging that warheads should not be stored anywhere near active fighting. But remarkably, there have been no Russian announcements about the status of the warheads it has at any of its other storage sites, Foreign Affairs says. The author suggests several possible explanations for this. Russian leader Vladimir Putin may believe that relocating the country's nuclear warheads would be seen as a sign of weakness. The Russian leadership may be unaware of the risks posed by these warheads. The Russian military may fear that the West would misinterpret the relocation of warheads as preparation for a nuclear attack, potentially leading to a preemptive strike by NATO. The possibility that a Ukrainian drone or missile will strike a warhead and create an explosion that distributes fissile material is already a major risk, but it is not the only one. Even more dangerous is the possibility that a Ukrainian missile strike or territorial takeover could throw a storage site into operational chaos, allowing rogue actors to seize its nuclear warheads or inadvertently prompt Russian nuclear escalation. Foreign Affairs reports the author underscores that Russia breached a sacred tenet of nuclear security by launching attacks against Ukraine from military bases that store nuclear warheads, thus making those bases a legitimate target for counter-offensives. 
He points out that since March 2022, Russia has been using the Engels-2 airbase to launch strikes on Ukraine with Kinzhal missiles, which are capable of carrying nuclear warheads. The author believes that there are probably dozens of nuclear warheads stored less than four miles from the Engels-2 base's main airfields. Russia is also thought to store dozens of nuclear warheads for short-range aircraft at the Yeysk and Morozovsk airbases. All of these airbases are known to have been attacked by Ukrainian forces multiple times. Foreign Affairs notes that a strike on a storage site would not in itself cause a nuclear explosion of the warheads. The threat arises when a warhead is outside a bunker, such as during transportation for maintenance within a storage site or at a rail transfer point. Sending foreign troops to Ukraine could help free up Ukrainian defenders and send them to the front said retired Major Alexei Getman, a veteran of the Russian-Ukrainian war. What Macron said about the Foreign Legion, God himself commands that it be done. Firstly, there are many ethnic Ukrainians there and they have the right to use this legion in any point on the globe where there is a danger for France. Of course, partner troops need to be involved since this will allow us to defeat evil faster with fewer losses. He explained in an interview with Ukrainian radio, according to Hetman, Foreign troops could be involved in protecting the border with Belarus. He emphasized that this is not about participating in military actions and Ukraine has the right to invite foreign troops. There are no violations of international law in this. Foreign military could free up our troops and send them to areas of the front where there is a shortage of personnel. We would need 100 to 160,000 soldiers who would go not to the front line but to other positions. It would become easier for us to fight. Western partners must understand that the Third World War is unfolding and we will have to fight anyway, the veteran stated. Earlier, Russian Foreign Ministry spokeswoman Maria Zakharova said that sending Western troops to Ukraine will lead to a direct clash of nuclear powers. The practical implementation of this idea, you know what it will lead to. I can repeat for those who may have forgotten. It will lead to a direct clash of nuclear powers with catastrophic consequences, she stressed. Since February 2022, Western strategy toward Ukraine has had two central elements. Firstly, massive military and economic support to Ukraine to ensure it can survive as an independent state. But secondly, avoidance of the direct involvement of Western militaries because, as President Joe Biden has put it, that would risk World War III. The result has been two bright lines preventing escalation. No Russian attacks on NATO countries. No Western forces directly fighting Russia in Ukraine. The recent debate with suggestions of deploying small numbers of European forces to help operate air defense systems lacks seriousness. What would happen if European troops were killed? If European states did nothing, their bluff would have been called. The alternative would likely be to deploy even more forces.